Good morning, friends of the deer and deer friends. And everyone who is out there in this worldwide web of us, that we are consciousness inside of a body working with the world to the best of our abilities and sometimes it can feel difficult especially as Arlen pointed out to me if you have a belief that it's only through suffering that you can heal <laughs> so whew, let's let that one go if you're ready to let it go you're ready to let go of suffering I support you in letting go of your suffering as I let go of my suffering so we can all just get off the suffering bandwagon and it's hard to suffer when you have this beautiful flannel comfortable shirt even if your hair's sticking up and who knows what else you're seeing that I'm not that's why I like when the lighting is not as good so I have a spirit guide my spirit guide's name name is Arlen Arlen was around really consistently in my consciousness for a year 14 months maybe a little bit afterwards um, in 1996 to 97 when the event of the um, incarnation of Abrahamanad as the soul of the earth took place on March 23rd of 1997 and I got an opportunity to speak with Arlen as he was heading in to his new home the earth and Arlen you know said to me he appreciated what I had done to assist him in this process and that if there was anything I needed that I could just let him know. He said, and he wanted me to recognize he was gonna be very busy because he was gonna be shifting the energetics of the entire world, the planet, this earth, the field of energy around it, the healing the body of the earth, healing the mind of the earth, healing the emotional realm of the earth, he hearing healing the spiritual realm of the earth and as that vibration kept raising um, humans the human form is of the earth carbon oxygen hydrogen nitrogen sulfur all sorts of little things mitochondrial energy stations producing energy hearts pumping blood blood cleansing the body, eliminating waste, the liver, the kidneys, the spleen, the pancreas, the intestines, all working together harmoniously for the good of the whole, which is who we are. Organisms working harmoniously for the good of the whole. If we feel like we've pulled back and we've been separate from the whole now can't now is the only time that one can just let go of that feeling of separation and just come back into a feeling of being part of the whole that's what I'm doing and with Arlen's help it's going faster and Arlen you know, I guess he was around. I guess he was teaching me in night school. And I guess he was like suggesting things in my mind during the day, you know, for the past 27 years. I wasn't as aware of him as I was about three weeks ago when he just, um, he just, appeared to me in my consciousness and offered support for what I was doing. And it's been wonderful. 
I would not want to have gone through what I've gone through in the past three weeks without him. So thank you, Arlen. You're a lovely guide and friend and teammate. So this morning I said, you know, in my consciousness, I said, Arlen, would you pick the card for the day? And so all I did was cut the deck, felt a sense it was on the underside, turned it over, got the fool card. In my in the numbers where you add up all the um, numbers in your birth, you know, so for me it's 1, 14, 19, 51, you add those up. And um, I came up with 22. If you come up with a number above 22, you keep adding. If you come up with 22 or less, so any number between 1 and 22, that is your um, personality card for the lifetime. And then, say you, co you come up and you're like, I came up and I'm 22, so that's, that's the fool card which is zero. So the fool is kind of the end and the beginning. So it's 22, it's zero. It's 22, it's zero. Yeah, and it keeps going. And so my personality card for this life is the fool. And I was, look, I, I left my tarot book, which was being very useful to me in understanding cards I was getting and sharing them with you but I was looking for a book to have while I was here and I came up with this book Finding the Fool Meg Jones Wall and I just want to say that whoever Meg Jones Wall is um, she's amazingly intuitive and helpful to me in my work with Tarot because her words are just so often just perfect. And so <laughs> the fool is the zero. Zero is the fool. And it's and it's related to the planet, and I'm going to say it, Uranus. Not the other way I can say it, which just makes me become five or six years old and start feeling like potty talk. But the planet Uranus is about innovation, revolution, rebellion, and change. And that's what's going on right now on this planet in every country is a total revolution of consciousness and I'm not in other places I'm paying more attention to the place that I am physically present but I'm paying attention to the energetics of the world because I help ground the disturbance of the world 24 hours a day seven days a week coming up on five years <laughs> it's been a lot of work I'm doing fine Innovation, revolution, rebellion, change. The, the number or the numerical symbol, whether or not it's a number, can, can zero be a number, but that's an argument I don't want to have, and it's math. Who wants to do math at 6, 11 in the morning? But zero is infinity, it's freedom, it's possibility, it's the beginning and the end. The key words are desire, profound trust in self. And this isn't that you have this 
that you're consciously aware of, this is that you have this inside yourself. You have desire. You have a profound trust in self. See, you can find it. You may also have a programmed distrust in self. So that can be released. I choose to dis disconnect from the matrix or thought form that I can't trust myself. I let it go. I choose to let it go. Fearlessness, which is just a recognition that sometimes we're going to feel fear. And then we're going to decide what to do. Not because of the fear, but in spite of the fear. Intuition. New beginnings. Doesn't this feel like a new beginning? Just feels so right and wrong at the same time. Does it feel like you're taking a chance without a full plan? Moving into the unknown with joy? Are you, are you feeling the joy yet? That, yeah, this is unknown, but this is joyful. This is exciting. Something new is coming, and I'm looking forward to it. Seeing endless potential. A fresh start, an unknown journey. Inexperience. Freedom, aspiration, risk. And these are the words in the first paragraph. Some dreams stay with us even after waking. Our eyes slowly open and we come back to the physical world. Yet our hearts linger in a fantasy that captivates our imagination. A spectral prospect that steals our breath and demands our focus. We may emerge slowly from slumber into our day but pieces of our mind, heart, and soul have been left behind, continued, continuing to explore this new possibility. Weeks slip by, but the mirage remains, coming into richer clarity, distracting us from our usual patterns and routines. What started as a vague whisper becomes an insistent obsession. We abandon any thought of leaving this yearning behind and instead embrace new details as they emerge, letting potential grow. Complicated desires manifest. And we consider ways that we could adjust our current path to start moving in this unexpected but promising new direction. Optimis optimism floods us. Hope begins to grow even as that vision feels so far out of reach, so unrealistic, unre so uncertain like the whole world being one. One consciousness working together for the good of all. There's no promise of success. No guarantee that we'll reach that shimmering far off horizon. We're considering rearranging our entire life to chase after something theoretical, something unsettled, 
something that we desperately want but we aren't sure how to accomplish such a thing and don't even know where to start. That moment when we decide to throw caution to the wind and chase the fantasy anyway, when we begin to actively move toward that vision that has manifested in our mind and begin a radical journey, that is the brilliant, wide-eyed, aspirational energy of the fool. In many ways, we've been here on the planet, possibly time and time and time again. And we'll, we have Oftentimes our memories are related to the things that didn't get resolved. Those things that have emotional content to them. Those things we didn't release and integrate that keep springing back up again when we're triggered, when somebody says something to us and all these feelings emerge. And then we maybe get angry or maybe lash out or maybe sulk or maybe do whatever it is we do when we're triggered but we're aware that we're triggered and what it means to be triggered is it means that you have unresolved emotions based in an unresolved memory that your system is attempting to bring back into your consciousness now, for me this morning, the memory didn't come back and I didn't necessarily feel like I needed the memory because I had the emotions. And when you have the emotions, you can release the emotions. And if you release the emotions thoroughly, it completes and releases and integrates whatever the memory is or was. So that happened this morning, w waking up with, you know, kind of a panic feeling and, um, and loss and sorrow and um, anger, all of those emotions up, kind of full tilt after having a lovely day yesterday. So it's, it's like... When it's ready to release, it comes to the surface. If you force it back down, if you're able to force it back down, and that's what you've done with this, these particular feelings over and over and over again, then you might be able to do it again, but at some point you won't be able to do it because the vibration is so powerful that it's dissolving these things that were stored. It's bringing them up for the surface for us to let go of the emotions of the event and then let go of any energy that we have about the event, complete it so we're present. And this is a time to be present, to be clearing the past in the present, to be envisioning a bright future that we see beginning to appear to us and holding that in the present. And in the present, coming out of our thinking, 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 working it, working it, working it, working it, coming out of that and coming into the heart and into the deep self where you feel like everything is working perfectly. And then things begin to appear for you to do and people begin to appear in your life and you have these interactions and these things happen as a part of a mycelial bed, like the whole plant that puts out what we call mushrooms. But underneath the soil is this whole organism that's so connected 
that even the one down in Oregon, which is, I, I think I've got this right, four miles across, four miles in all directions, this mycelial bed has, is spread out. And if you do something that puts a vibration of irritation into one end, end of it, they've recorded this, it's immediately felt at the other end. So this is, yeah, multiple cells, but one organism. This is a metaphor that's been coming into my consciousness more and more and more. We as one organism of humanity, if we just take the aspect of us as humanity, as one organism of humanity, we feel everything. That's why people just drink it away or smoke it away or meditate it away or run it away. Whatever your kind of escape route of choice is, the best thing to do possibly is to enfold the whole thing, to just, I feel everything I feel and I accept that I feel it. And everything that I feel that may be what the organism is feeling right now, I accept it. And I accept it and I feel it currently. We can feel it at different times, you know, what's going on. You know, sometimes it's the shoulders are tight, sometimes it's the gut. It just feels achy. But whatever we're aware of in the moment, it's oftentimes best to feel it from the heart and fold the world as your loved one, which it is. It's your body. The oneness of all things is your body. And love your body. Love every cell of your body. Lay, love every aspect of life while you can and hopefully continuing on through this lifetime, next lifetime, next lifetime to be in your heart and loving. And when I think about in my heart and loving, I think about my receptionist. We worked together for 15 years and, and that's been, now we're probably six years past that, five years past that. But we're still working together. And she was the representation in my life of loving just everyone. <laughs> she didn't have easy circumstances. She's lost at a very early age, you know, in her 20s, she lost her husband to an auto accident. She had two young children to raise on her own. She had a twin sister who passed away, a mother who passed away. Carol was with them, working with that, losing her you know, losing her husband, some point like all of us, losing your dad, losing your mom, not all of us lo lose our twin sisters. Younger, I mean, same age twin sisters, I don't know who was born first, but just inseparable. And then one is separated. And I'm sure the one that is taken away on a physical level just this is her twin, just is there on a being level with her, helping her through all these other things that she's gonna be going through. The loss of her son, 
just the thought of that brings such a wealth of grief for me, the thought of it. Isn't it good to just let go of that grief? That grief that may be from another lifetime where that son that you loved was lost or that daughter you loved was lost or that wife or husband or parent. That those loved ones you lost in all of those lifetimes, you can release that now. Just the grief, grief of all that loss, you can release that now. And a lot easier now that Arlen pointed out to me my belief that I needed to suffer in order to heal. And I have the intention that I learn to heal in joy. And I learn to heal in love. Because every other is myself. So any healing I work, work I do for anybody heals our self. And we're in a rapid stage of healing right now. And some of it, are, some of ourselves aren't doing as well as others of ourselves. But as we open up to the organism as our self, we can then accept what is offered from others in the way of support as we each move through this. That is the tarot card reading for today. That is, today's card was the fool. My personality card for this lifetime and, um, and an aspect of myself that I like, willing to change, and now must go. <laughs>